So today, Francis is expected to be released from the hospital and returned to home in Vatican City. And now we have a better idea of what he actually was hospitalized with. If you saw my more recent couple days ago report on his hospitalization, you know that uh, I couldn't exactly tell you what he was hospitalized with. Some outlets reported it was some pulmonary condition that was not really enumerated on what it was. Others report that he'd had a heart attack. Still, others reported that he had had a fall or something, and it became pretty much a throw a dart at a board and take just a wild guess. The official line from the Vatican at the time was that he had been admitted to the hospital for something routine, except he then canceled everything he had fought for the rest of the week, which is not usually what you do when you have a routine doctor's visit, and most of the time a routine doctor's visit doesn't result in you being in the hospital for a couple of days. So we didn't get much of anything. You might be aware of this by now, but if not, he was hospitalized with bronchitis, which is definitely for his personal health, a much better situation to be in than a heart attack. But the man is 86 years old, and bronchitis is a serious thing to deal with at any age, let alone at the age of 86. So keep him in your prayers for his conversion, all of it. It's a serious situation, but he is actually doing very well, according to this release from Vatican News. And this is basically a press release because the Vatican News Agency is basically NPR or the BBC of Vatican. And a lot of times people don't like comparison, the comparison between the Vatican News Agency and the BBC and NPR. But the sad reality of it is that, well, it is state media. It is the state media of the modernist regime in Rome. And so they will give you oftentimes the party line on things. We'll never challenge anything. But we get this from them. This is the statement from them, and it is relatively short. I'll give it to you in full. The director of the Holy See Press Office, Matteo Bruni, has stated, As he is scheduled to leave the hospital tomorrow, today, folks, Pope Francis is expected to be present in St. Peter's Square for the Eucharistic celebration of Palm Sunday, Passion of the Lord. In an earlier statement, Mr. Bruni updated the press on the Pope's condition. Yesterday's day, the statement began, passed well, with a normal clinical course. In the evening, Pope Francis had dinner, eating pizza, together with those who are assisting him during these days of his hospital stay. With the Holy Father were the doctors, nurses, assistants, and staff of the Agenda Mari. It added that this morning, after having breakfast, he read some newspapers and resumed work. His Holiness, the statement concluded, is expected to to return to the Santa Marta home tomorrow upon the outcome of the result of the last examination this morning. In a Thursday evening statement, Bruni conveyed that doctors at the Gemelli Hospital in Rome, where the Pope was admitted on Wednesday afternoon, said he had been diagnosed with viral bronchitis that requires the administration of an antibiotic therapy administered by infusion. In that statement, Bruni conveyed information received from the medical staff treating the Pope at the hospital and said that the following results of the planned clinical checkups, it was found that the Holy Father is affected by a viral bronchitis that requires the administration of antibiotics that, quote, have resulted in a marked improvement in his state of health, end quote. I saw some response to this basically being that he should be very lucky, count himself very lucky, that this happened to him in 2023 and not in 2020. You know why. The At that time with the... Uh, possible consequences of his Pacamama consecration just a few months earlier, the affliction that we that will remain unnamed here resulted in the kind of place he was getting treatment here not being the best place to go, especially for a man of his age. And actually, the one he went to, Gamelli, was actually one of the most notorious ones in 2020 for being just a place that if you went there and you were above a certain age, you were not coming out alive. So... He is making a full recovery, it looks like. And that is generally good news if you're okay with making sure that he has the time to repent of his errors and the rest of it, because I will bluntly tell you I am not a fan if you're new to my channel. Um, I find it kind of funny here, the National Catholic Register focused on the Pope Francis, like with this headline, Pope Francis had pizza dinner, may leave hospital tomorrow, which I saw one commentator on Twitter describe as the most Italian headline possible. His Holiness is expected to return to Santa Marta home tomorrow upon the outcome of the results of late tests this morning. 
the same story basically from but the National Catholic Re Register, which is the news arm of EWTN. And this really does get me kind of wondering because some people didn't like my comment on being restrained with talking about Francis and his health. So I'm curious what you think. What is the proper response? Are we as Catholics called to, even if you are suspicious of his claim to the papacy, are we called to treat the man with respect and try to pray for his conversion and pray for his good health? Or, because I've seen other people who were practically doing cartwheels over the news, this might possibly be his end. I don't wish that upon anybody to not, you know, go to their judgment without having repented of their public sins because his errors are public in nature, promoting modernism, tearing down the traditional liturgy, allying himself with some of the worst figures in the secular world. Those are public errors. Those are errors of a very public nature and they're errors against the faith. Now that having been said, ultimately I expect he will make some kind of a confession before he departs this world and stands before our Lord and whether or not that is valid or not is entirely between him and God. That's not up for us to decide. That's my take on this, but I'm curious if you think that we're all being too nice and people have every right to be happy that he was possibly going to be gone, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm curious what you think of that. So let me know in the comments. I'm curious though, to think about what's going to happen next, because I don't trust the Vatican News Agency at all. I don't trust the official ch Catholic Church media outlets in the slightest, it's including to tell us the truth about why he was there. And this, you know, I had a friend tell me that if you see a whole flurry of activity soon, you will know. You will know that something is up. And I tend to think that that's correct. So some things to watch for. We know that synodal things are happening. The Synod on Synodality is happening. And we've been expecting sort of a possibility of an announcement of a consistory for a new batch of cardinals, since there is, technically speaking, not the amount that canon law says for holding a conclave. That wouldn't stop a conclave from happening and being valid, but the church requires 125, and they're below that number now. So there are openings. So he could have a consistory later in the year. And a consistory is where the Pope meets with the bishops as a body and promotes a few of them to the office of cardinals who can then participate in the choosing of the next Supreme Pontiff of the church. We haven't had one of those announced yet. And usually those are announced like in January or February. And now here we are in April. So we haven't had that happen yet. And those typically happen in August. Don't be surprised if you see one announced. That doesn't mean that's for sure. But also if you start seeing a flurry of activity of vacant uh, position, you know, vacant seas around the world, especially in the, in the United States and other troubled places where you see places without bishops suddenly getting new bishops in large numbers. If you start seeing a flurry of documents, you'll know. Um, a, also looming over all this is April 3rd. That was the initial date it was reported that there was likely to be a document restricting the traditional Latin mass further. I have expressed some skepticism of that numerous times simply because we got a document like that in February, although it was mostly just a reissuing of Traditionis Custodis in closing a loophole. But the rumor persists that we should get something during Holy Week. So keep your eyes out for that story if it does happen, but it could also come and go without anything happening. But let me know what you think of what's coming. Do you expect you're going to see a flurry of activity or do you think we're going to have Francis for longer than anybody expects? And let me also know what you think the appropriate response is. Anytime he goes to the hospital or has something happen that it looks like his time is drawing to a close, what is the proper response? And I had some people approve of how I handled it before, but I want to see a discussion on that in the comments because we have, I think, personally a duty to pray for those whom we disagree with. Our Lord told us to pray even for our enemies. And I don't know if he fits the bill or not, but Francis could use your prayers for his conversion and for his good health on all the rest. So let me know what you think of all this in the comments, please. Like and subscribe. If you haven't, it does help. Sharing this on social media helps a lot too. As always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.